A reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will return to David's house if now this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. The hearts of this people will return to their master, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me. After taking counsel, the king made two calves of gold and said to the people, you have been going up to Jerusalem long enough. Here is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he put one in Bethel and the other in Dan. This led to sin because the people frequented those calves in Bethel and in Dan. He also built temples on high places and made priests from among the people who were not Levites. Jeroboam established a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month to duplicate in Bethel the pilgrimage feast of Judah with sacrifices to calves he had made and he stationed in Bethel priests of high places he had built. Jeroboam did not give up his evil ways after this, but again made priests for the high places. From among the common people, whoever desired it was consecrated and became a priest of the high places. This was a sin on the part of the house of Jeroboam, for which it was to be cut off and destroyed from the earth. The word of the Lord. God. Remember us, O Lord, as your favor, your people. Remember us, O Lord, as your favor, your people. We have sinned. We and our fathers, we have committed crimes. We have done wrong. Our fathers in Egypt considered not your wonders. They made a calf in Herod and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass eating bullock. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Dominus vobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum, In those days, when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, my heart is moved with pity for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, 
How many loaves do you have? They replied, seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute. And they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them to, to, to ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his, his disciples and came to the region of Dalmatha. Verbum Domini. Saints are born and raised in a family. Saints Scholastica and Saint Benedict, brother and sister, born of the same womb, in the flesh, the same parents, and likely the same baptismal font in their hometown, and at the end of their life, they shared the same tomb, the same grave, and now they share the same pulpit. Two first-class relics of St. Scholastica and St. Benedict, asking their intercession for us. These two saints point to the importance of spiritual accompaniment. It might not be possible in these days for every person in the church to have a priest for a spiritual director, but saints like these, Benedict and Scholastica, show us that the Christian life is not meant to be walked alone, that we need guides we need people with us to walk with us in the spiritual life. Not just to teach us how to pray, but just simply to have conversations with. And this could be somebody as simple as a best friend, somebody that you share your life with, somebody that you're open with and can share those things in your heart that possibly you've never shared with anybody else. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, says often that the spiritual life is meant to be a journey of spiritual accompaniment and that this is necessary for the Christian life, spiritual accompaniment. It's important for growth in the life of faith, to grow in faith in knowledge of God. It's important to grow in trust and charity, but not just the theological virtues spiritual accompaniment is important for, but simply just to be human, to grow in the human virtues of prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance to help us to learn to be more human. And this is like the, the foundation in which the spiritual life is built. The spiritual life is meant to be built upon the life of humanity, and the spiritual life transforms humanity. But the, the virtues that we learn in spiritual accompaniment prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance, along with all the other virtues, that's like building your house on rock. That makes sense. You first have to lay a firm foundation in order for the spiritual life to be built on. 
If we don't, it's like building our house on sand. In the joy of the gospel, Pope Francis teaches that, quote, the art of accompaniment, which teaches us to remove our sandals before the sacred ground of others. What does this sound like? Moses approaching the Lord in the burning bush takes his sandals off because this is sacred ground. Whenever we're in spiritual conversation, spiritual accompaniment with another human person, that's sacred ground. I treat that in confession, that, that ground there is shake, sacred too as well before penitent and confessor. But in any conversation involving the spiritual life, that's very sacred ground. And we're to treat it that way. I don't think you have to move, remove your sandals off or remove, or remove your shoes every time you have a spiritual conversation with somebody. But you get the point. But to treat, to treat that ground as if it's very sacred. Here's a short excerpt from the Office of Readings for today's memorial. It's written by Pope St. Gregory the Great concerning St. Scholastica and St. Benedict. He says, Scholastica, the sister of St. Benedict, had been consecrated to God from her earliest years. She was accustomed to visiting her brother once a year. He would come down to meet her at the place of the monastery property not far outside the gate. One day she came as usual and her saintly brother went with some of his disciples. They spent the whole day praising God and talking of sacred things. As night fell, they had supper together. Their spiritual conversation went on and the hour grew late. The holy nun said to her, to her brother, please do not leave me tonight let us go on until morning talking about the delights of the spiritual life. Sister, he replied, what are you saying? I simply cannot live without my cell. When she heard her brother refuse her request, the holy woman joined her hands at the table, laid her head on them and began to pray. As she raised her head from the table, there were such brilliant flashes of lightning, such great peals of thunder, and such heavy downpour of rain that neither Benedict nor his brethren could stir across the threshold of the place that they had been seated. <laughs> Sadly, he began to be complain, Benedict, may God forgive you, sister. <laughs> what have you done? Well, she answered, I asked you, and you would not listen. So I asked my God, and he did listen. So now go off if you can, leave me, and return to your monastery. I think you know the answer of what happened. Reluctant as he was to stay on his own will, he remained against his will. So it came about that they stayed awake the whole night, engrossed in conversation in the spiritual life. And Pope St. Gregory the Great continues, it is not surprising that she was more effective than he was, since as St. John says, God is love. It was absolutely right that she should do more, and she loved more. And then three days later, it says that St. Benedict was in his cell, looking up to the sky, and he saw his sister's soul leave her body in the form of a dove and flying up to the secret places of heaven. Rejoicing in her great glory, she thanked, he thanked Almighty God with hymns of, and words of praise. He then sent his brethren to bring her body to the monastery and lay it in the tomb that he had prepared for himself. 
Their minds had been united in God. Their bodies were to share a common grave. It's a beautiful example of spiritual accompaniment. It doesn't even need to be someone like a best friend or even somebody from the same womb, maybe a sister. But pray for that, whoever that may be. You probably have really good friends, maybe that you share common interest with. Pray for the example of Saints Benedict and Scholastica. And in the presence of these two saints, that might be something worth praying for today. And I pray for you today at this Mass that the Lord provide for each of you a spiritual companion to break open the Word of God and how it applies to your life and how it applies to your growth and holiness. Again, it might be as simple as calling or sitting down with a good friend once a month and reflecting on the spiritual life instead of gossiping with a friend. How about diving into sacred scripture? How about diving into the lives of the saints instead of gossiping and just spending time in useless chatter? How about taking out a good book, picking up the scriptures, and talking about the gospel of the day? And as in the gospel, the Lord multiplies what little we have to give. This Lent, pray for the Lord to transform your relationships. Any relationships that you already have, to be like these saints, Saints Scholastica and St. Benedict. And they might not have spent much time together, as St. Gregory the Great accounted. They might not have spent all these late hours together, but the time that they did spend together was quality time. We all have friends like this. And through the intercession of Saints Benedict and Scholastica, especially Saint Scholastica on her feast day, we ask for this grace that we may have guides, friends with us to help us to grow in the knowledge of God and love of one another. May Almighty God bless you through the intercession of Saint Scholastica, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.